Hello, dear students. In the last lecture, we have seen what is the similarities that have been existing there between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Apart from that, we have seen the differences lying there on the morphologically how they can be differentiated and genetic features that are differentiating the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This class we will look at into the internal features internally how the prokaryote and eukaryotic cells can be differentiated. The first one is this is a very uh, important thing that differentiates between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. First we look at the point related to the eukaryote that is in the right hand side there. The membrane bound organelles are present that is unit membrane bound organelles are present which includes the mitochondria and chloroplasts that are made up of double membranes. Whereas if you look at there into the prokaryotic features membrane bound organelles are absent. They do not have a membrane bound organelles similar to that of the eukaryotes. But there are quite different structures that could be come across or viewed there in the prokaryotes include some organelles or organelle like structures such as chlorosomes, carboxysome which are made up of non-unit membrane. So in order to understand this point or appreciate the difference between the prokaryote and eukaryote with reference to the membrane, we need to understand the meaning for the term unit membrane and non-unit membrane. The unit membrane and non-unit membrane could be best understood when you look at into this particular diagram. You look at this diagram. This diagram is a structure of the chlorosomes. So this is electron microscopic image of the chlorosome. Chlorosome has been attached there to the cell membrane. Okay. So I have told two points. One is a unit membrane and another one is a non-unit membrane. You look at here the cell membrane of these organisms is made up of unit membrane. That is two different monolayers that have been arranged together or united together to form into a unit membrane. However, if you look at there into the non-unit membrane, it will be a single monolayer of phospholipids and proteins that will be arranged there. So this is the structure of the chlorosome. Chlorosome is the one which found to have a non-unit membrane. Whereas this chlorosome is just attached there to the cell membrane. That is, these chlorosomes are commonly present there in the green sulfur bacteria. These are all certain groups of specific bacteria which are utilizing the sunlight to manufacture their own food materials. Okay. So, in this concept, these chlorosomes have been anchored there to the cell membrane. If you look at into the cell membrane, that is made up of a unit membrane. However, the membrane of chlorosomes are made up of non-unit membrane. The next one is related with the some kind of molecules that have been present there in the cell membrane. You look at the prokaryotes there. Steroids are not commonly present. Whereas there in the eukaryotes, steroids are universal or they are commonly present. But instead of steroids, bacteria that is prokaryotes found to have hopanoids. What are hopanoids? There are certain pentacyclic rigid compounds analogous to that of the cholesterol commonly occur in bacteria and they may play a role in the membrane integrity and in pH homeostasis. Those, this is the role that have been played there by the hoponoids that are present in the cell membrane. So these hoponoids are common there in the cell membrane of the bacteria. However, if you look at into the eukaryotes, sterols or steroids are the common molecules that are stability maintenance there in the cell membrane. You look at here, this is a eukaryotic cell membrane. You can able to see the insertion of cholesterol molecule there in the phospholipid bilayer. If you look at there in the cell membrane of a bacteria, instead of phospholipid, you can able to find a molecule called as a hoponoid. Hoponoid are playing a similar role there of the cholesterol molecule in providing a proper stability there for the cell membrane. Then some points related to where the energy generation systems are there present in the cell membrane. Cell membrane contains the respiratory chain that is oxidative phosphorylation or photosynthetic 
phosphorylation that is photophosphorylation both this phosphorylation chains will be commonly present there in the cell membrane of the bacteria however if you look at into the eukaryotic cell membrane the respiratory chains are absent the respiratory chains are present in some specific organelle or some special organelles for example the oxidative phosphorylation which is actually happening there in the cell membrane of bacteria is happening inside the mitochondria similarly the photophosphorylation which happens there in some kind of a photosynthetic cyanobacteria there in the cell membrane is operating there in the eukaryotic algae as well as plant system there inside the chloroplast that is photophosphorylation is the one which is performed under the chloroplast the next point is related with the internal feature of the flagella so flagella is commonly referred as a simple flagella that is of a 20 nanometer in diameter and it is made up of mainly flagellin protein and they are present commonly exterior to the cell that is extracellular in location however if you look at into the eukaryotic flagella they are complex flagella that are having a 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules that is microtubules are some specific protein that makes about the flagella of the eukaryota this flagella is made up of tubulin that is having a 200 nanometer in diameter and the flagella are commonly localized intercellular or internal to the cell here look at the image of the flagella of a eukaryotic organism okay the eukaryotic flagella is having a point of a 9 plus 2 arrangement you can able to see the 9 rings 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the 2 that have been present in the center so this is the flagella so this is an electron microscopy image showing the 9 plus 2 arrangement of the flagella these are all made up of microtubules next one is cytoskeletal elements cytoskeleton is similar to that of the skeleton that have been present there in the any kind of a living organism say so skeleton is the one which is present in our entire body however cytoskeleton refers to some kind of skeletons that have been present inside each and every cell these cytoskeletons are commonly present both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes but there is a small difference there in the type of proteins that have been involved in the cytoskeleton formation if you look at into the prokaryote their cytoskeleton are mainly made up of tubulin and actin like proteins however the eukaryotes are having a cytoskeleton that is made up of microtubule microfilaments and even actin filaments could be present there you look at this diagram of the cytoskeleton you can able to see the uh, cytoskeleton that have been present inside the cell so this is a cell in which you can able to see a cell membrane in the top most in the outside also in the interior you can able to see a mitochondria and even ribosomes you can able to see three different structures of cytoskeleton microtubule microfilament as well as the intermediate filaments so these are the three different kinds of uh, component that have been making into the cytoskeleton of a eukaryotic organism this has been little more explained here okay so this is again the cell in which they are showing the different kind of cytoskeletal filaments that have been present there maybe of intermediate filament it may be of a micro tubules these micro tubules are made up of monomers called as tubulin micro filaments are made up of a monomers called as actin so they will be present in the interior of the cell in this appearance you can understand better about this thing when you are going to look at it do some video which i will try to show in the subsequent classes the next point is related to the transport of molecule inside that is the endocytosis and exocytosis these things are commonly referred by a term called as a bulk transport bulk transport refers to endocytosis and exocytosis which is a common feature in eukaryotic organism such kind of transports are completely lacking there in the prokaryotes the next one is cell differentiation usually cell differentiation is not a phenomena there in the prokaryotes however cells differentiate to form into tissues tissues into organ organ to organ system and finally the entire organism is the one which is formed by cellular differentiation there in the eukaryotes whereas you look at into the prokaryote even though 
the cellular differentiation is not a common phenomena there are few exception very simple example is this cyanobacteria you look at the cyanobacteria how it is looking see this is a cyanobacteria which is having the vegetative cells these are all vegetative cell but still you can able to see some differentiated cell there in the cyanobacteria one is a heterocyst cell heterocyst cells are those that are involved in nitrogen fixation and in the right hand side corner you can able to see a dark large size cell which is a akinid it is a resting spore that is a spore from which again the new vegetative cells will be arising there in the cyanobacteria one more example for a cellular differentiation is there in the colobacter if you look at it to the colobacter it is having a large life cycle itself see it is having different phases in which there is a lot of differentiation there that have been happening during the cell development in the colobacter the next one is cytoplasmic streaming what is cytoplasmic streaming it is movement of cytoplasm inside the cell first we look at how the cytoplasmic streaming could be present there in this cell see this is a alloidia plant in which a cytoplasmic streaming has been shown there you can able to see the movement of the chloroplast inside the cell this is one cell inside which you can able to see the movement of the chloroplast so the cytoplasmic streaming is commonly absent in the prokaryotes however they are present in the eukaryotes the next one is related to adjacent cell connections is the cell is being connected there with the nearby cell okay this phenomena we have already seen in the previous lectures also this is commonly absent there in the prokarya very simple reason they are single cell organism so where is the connection there so it is commonly absent however if you look at there into the plant system or with the animals you can able to see a lot of adjacent cell connection in the plants it's actually the plasma desma that forms the cell connection so one cell is been connected with the other cell with the help of plasma desma structures okay so you can able to see the plasma desma there through electron microscopic image also this is an electron microscopic image this is a one cell and this is another cell that has been connected through the presence of plasma desma so such kind of a cell connections were there present in the animal cell also this is a diagram of an animal cell there it has been connected with the adjacent cells with the help of various structures which are commonly referred as a junctional complex which constitutes a tight junction as well as the adhesion junction so these two are the uh, things that helps in connection of the adjacent cells there in the animals the next one is a cell to cell communication the cell to cell communication in the bacteria is taking place by a special mechanism called as a quorum sensing or density dependent sensing of the bacteria however cell to cell communication happens in the eukaryotic organism by a mechanism called signal transduction this signal transduction we are going to study separately there in the fifth unit in detail there in the fifth unit and the next one is a programmed cell death the term which simply explains about the programmed cell death is apoptosis so apoptosis is the one which explains about the programmed cell death so this is apoptosis a normal cell undergoes apoptosis through a cycling process in which the cell is programmed to die finally okay the cell has been finally lysed and it will be die this thing will be commonly taking place for the worn out cells or for the old cells so such kind of mechanisms will be present there in the eukaryotic organisms however there is no any question of a programmed cell death there in the prokaryotes the other differences that have been existing there between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes can be grouped on the points of organelle wise differences so these points are easily understandable for endoplasmic reticulum present absent golgi apparatus present absent mitochondria is actually absent or most of the things have been listed here are absent in the prokaryotes mitochondria is present in animals as well as in the plant system chloroplasts are something unique there only with the plant system they are not present in animals centrosomes are absent present lysosomes peroxisomes and microbodies vacuoles 
vacuoles are commonly present there in both the organism these two points peroxisomes and vacuoles are micro bodies have been identified in both these groups of organisms and the last one is related with some special organelle like thing that have been identified that is php granules carboxisome chlorosome chlorosome i have already shown there in the green sulfur bacteria how it has been anchored there in the cell membrane and magnetosomes so they are all commonly bound by a non unit membrane or sometimes even crystalline layers have been lining there on this organelle like thing and they are present there in the prokaryote however they are entirely absent there in the eukaryote now we will try to look at the images of some of the uh, structures that have been recovered there in the prokaryote this is a sudan black base staining of the bacterial cells to show the presence of php that is polyhydroxy butyrate as a granule inside the cells okay the next one is related with the carboxisomes carboxisomes are some special structures present in some sulfur oxidizing bacteria that help in fixing the carbon dioxide that is the atmospheric carbon dioxide into cell carbon so these carboxisomes are again bounded by certain crystalline layers you can look at the crystalline layers that have been bounding there the carboxisomes and the third one is the magnetosomes magnetosomes are certain ion containing structures some kind of a structures that have been present there inside the spirulum cells they are commonly referred as a magnetosome this particular kind of bacteria are referred as a magnetotactic bacteria this magnetosomes plays a major role there in the navigation of this particular bacteria